When I said in part one of this series that absolutely nothing in this game uses hitscan, I wasn't being hyperbolic. This might be really surprising for some of you, because after all, chargers are definitely hitscan, right? Well, in reality, no. Chargers are not hitscan, and there's a few quirks about them that I'm going to be explaining today. Welcome back to Projectiles 101, the series where I painfully over-explain even the most simple projectile mechanics in Splatoon 3. Today's class is, of course, Chargers. Since Chargers fire projectiles in completely straight lines, that makes them one of the few things in this game that does not use bullet simple. Because of this, you don't really need to watch any of the other videos in this series to get an understanding of how they work. This video will be split into two parts. The first will explain the mechanics and parameters governing how the projectiles that Chargers fire work, and the second part will have simulations showcasing what the Charger projectiles look like in practice. As always, I'll leave corrections in the pinned comment below if there are any. Additionally, these simulations are accurate to version 10.0.1, and should any of these parameters change between versions, I'll link an updated simulation in the same pinned comment. There's far more unique mechanics for chargers than there are for shooters, so let's get right to them without any further delay, shall we? The first thing that I need to go over is maximum range. Unlike other weapons in this game, the velocity of charger projectiles has no bearing whatsoever on its maximum range, as the maximum range is explicitly defined separately. So, if a charger projectile has a velocity of, say, 10 units per frame, and a maximum range of 15 units, the charger projectile would travel 10 units on frame 1 and 5 units on frame 2, hitting the 15 unit maximum range. Check out what happens with the splatter scope. At a full charge, it has a maximum range of about 26 units and a projectile velocity of 4.8 units per frame. On frame 5, the projectile has moved 24 units forwards, and on the next frame, it moves the remaining 2 units, covering less distance than it did on previous frames. Of course, these splatter scope parameters are for full charges only. Most charger projectiles have different range, damage, and projectile velocity depending on the charge level. Each of these values have their own sets of three parameters, defining three different points in the charge. Min, max, and full. Here are all the relevant parameters for how charger projectiles work, minus collision. The value parameters are the damage values. They're categorized under their own group, referred to as damage param. The internal damage numbers are 10 times the size you see in-game, so these default damage values are actually equal to 30 damage in-game. To demonstrate how these parameters work, I've created a line graph showcasing how the damage on the splat charger scales with charge level. The max range of projectile velocity scale in the same way that damage does, so you will see a similar pattern there. Min is self-explanatory. It's the value of these weapons at the minimum possible charge. However, do keep in mind that chargers do not reach minimum charge immediately. It takes 8 frames for all chargers to reach the minimum charge level. You cannot release your charge until this brief window is up, and if you attempt to release it, the game will wait for the 8 frame window to complete, then automatically release the charge. As you charge up more, the range, damage, and velocity values are gradually interpolated between the min and max values. Once you reach full charge, the values will be set to whatever their full charge value is. An interesting side effect of this is that it's impossible to ever fire a shot that has damage, range, and velocity equal to the max charge value, as it will always be set to the full charge value just as you hit max charge. You can see for yourself in game by looking at the damage that you deal with a charger. Most chargers have an 80 damage max charge value with a full charge value of over 100. If you attempt to deal 80 damage exactly with these chargers, you'll never quite reach it, always falling just a little bit short. Of course, the charge speed of chargers is not always consistent. When you jump in the air or run out of ink, your charge speed is usually reduced. This will cause the charger to interpolate between values more gradually for that time period. Interestingly, as long as you're airborne, the game does make an exception for minimum charges, and will still allow you to fire a shot after 8 frames. This exception does not apply if you've run out of ink, and if you do run out of ink, the game won't even buffer minimum charges for you. Also, here's some bonus trivia. There's actually a parameter for charger damage that controls the damage at a point between min and max charge called mid charge. In order for this parameter to work properly, another charge frame parameter needs to be used that normally controls when the GooTuber reaches its first charge level. When both the mid charge damage and charge frame values are activated, the game will use that as an additional point between the min and max charge values to interpolate between. That way, you can have the damage scale at different rates between the first and second charge circle. The damage at this point doesn't have to be between the min and max charge damage values either, it can be above or below them. You might think, well, big deal, the GooTuber probably uses it to control when it reaches 100 damage, but the funny thing is that it actually doesn't. The mid-charge frame parameter is just set to the point where the GooTuber naturally reaches 100 damage while charging. Since the GooTuber is the only weapon that uses the mid-charge frame parameter, it means that the mid-charge damage parameter is unused. Before I can move on to the simulations, I need to explain one more thing. You see, chargers have a really interesting quirk that no other weapon class has. If you go into the Equip menu and swap between different shooters, you'll probably notice that the ends of their barrels are positioned differently relative to each other. In-game, it may appear as though the bullets are coming out from different positions, however, this is not the case. In reality, all bullets from these weapon classes come out at a point about 0.22 units to the right and 1.07 units up from the bottom of your hurt box, although looking down causes bullets to spawn higher up than usual, up to about 1.67 units. 
With chargers, you can throw all of this aside because the bullets literally come out from the muzzle of the chargers. I assume the reasoning behind this is because the developers wanted the laser visual to match where the projectiles actually end up going, and having the laser be disconnected with the charger itself would look kinda weird. That's understandable, but it comes with a whole lot of strange side effects. The first one to mention is that chargers with longer barrels have more inherent range than ones with shorter barrels. The range values assigned to chargers implies that the devs were aware of this. The Squiffer, E-Leader, and Splat Charger all have slightly different range values at minimum charge, but when you add their muzzle positions, they all equal out. Pencil, however, despite having a different muzzle position to the spider scope, has identical range values, implying the devs copy-pasted and didn't care to correct for it. Well, Pencil does have a larger bullet collision size, which gives it a minor range boost anyways, so I guess they just didn't care. Aside from maximum range shenanigans, the spawn positions can also cause other problems because the position that players hold the chargers in can vary. For example, some shoes give the player extra height. This normally doesn't matter, except on chargers, because the extra height means the charger is held higher, and thus the bullet spawns from higher. Also, in the past there have been issues where some animations cause the muzzle to kick way out of its normal position and throw off the user's aim in the process. Before version 3.0.0, repeated tap shots were difficult to hit because the upwards kick animation would cause the shots to spawn higher than expected. Before version 7.2.0, whenever a new Squiffer user would use Zipcaster and get hit, it would cause the player to jitter around a bit, throwing off the aim. I don't have any footage of this, though. Well, that's all the projectile mechanics that I wanted to get to, so it's time to move on to the simulations and parameters. First, let's talk about some of the parameters I haven't touched on yet. You'll see that the collision parameters reference an initial and ending size. You don't need to worry about the hitbox size changes, since Charger projectiles are never set to change their hitbox sizes during their lifespans. The forward spawn offset isn't a parameter, it's just the total distance forwards that the Charger projectiles spawn from due to them coming out of the muzzle and not the player. Oh, and remember that the value parameters are the damage numbers, with them being 10 times larger than you would see in-game. There will be two simulations, a 3D and 2D one. The 3D one will show a charger being fired at different charge levels from a side and top-down perspective. The projectiles will go off once every 0.75 seconds regardless of the charger's actual fire rate. For clarity, the projectiles will leave behind a tracer line showing the ground that they cover as they move forward. This tracer line does not deal damage, and it's a visual aid only. They may not be perfectly accurate either, but they should be good enough to where it won't matter. The offset due to the muzzle position will be factored in, so it'll spawn slightly ahead of the player hurtbox firing it. Note that even if an opponent is behind the spawn position, they can still be hit by the charge. You can see what type of charge is being fired by looking in the top right corner. If the only difference between certain charge levels is damage, then I'll lump them together. For the chargers that have different stats at full charge, I'll be showing a max charge demonstration that will show what the charger projectiles look like if it is fired one frame before reaching full charge. This should hopefully be close enough to what the max charge looks like, although I don't think it matters since you can't actually reach full charge. The 2D simulation is much simpler, as it'll just show the range, damage, and velocity change as you charge up. The little dots on the line show where the projectile moves each frame, so you can get a sense of how quickly they move. The projectiles will spawn with their natural offset, and the range value does reflect this. The range value does not reflect collision size though, so be wary of that. The charge circle may not be fully accurate to how it looks in-game, as in-game there are sometimes issues with how much it's filled up being not accurate to how much it's charged. As with last time, I will only show the simulations at full speed. If you want to watch them in slow motion, you can slow down the playback speed of the video. If you're watching on desktop, you can advance and rewind the video one frame at a time by pausing and pressing the period and comma keys. Lastly, make sure you're watching at least 720p, as otherwise the simulations will be in 30fps which will skip over frames. Without further ado, let's watch these simulations. The Splat Charger, as you might expect, doesn't really have anything special going on. It does have a slightly longer barrel than the E-Leader though, which is kind of funny as you'd probably expect the reverse to be true. Looking past the scope and lack of a charge hold, the spider scope is nearly identical to the splat charger with the only difference being a 2 unit range boost at full charge only. Partial charges have the same range. And before you ask, no, the scope itself has no impact on charger projectiles.
the E-Leader, similar to the Splat Charger, doesn't really have a whole lot going on. It does get a boost in its projectile velocity at full charge, though. scope is as different to the E-Leader as the Splatter Scope is to the Splat Charger. Minus the scope and charge hold, it has two units of extra range at full charge only. For an unrelated fun fact, did you know that the E-Leader scope has more zoom than the Splatter Scope? Swiffer is also a weapon that has nothing interesting going on. Well, it charges pretty fast, I guess. Bamboozler is unique in that charging it up only affects its damage and paint. Its range and projectile velocity are always the same regardless of charge level. It also has a player hitbox that's twice as large as most of the other chargers. Tuber has a longer tap shot range than other chargers, but it doesn't have increased bullet velocity at minimum charge to compensate. Also, it's the only charger that can one-shot with a partial charge, being able to do this after it charges for 50 frames, at which point it can reach up to about 17.9 units, slightly less than Swiffer.
Metzl doesn't have a whole lot going on that I haven't already mentioned. To recap though, it has a larger player hitbox size like the Bamboozler, along with identical range numbers to the Splatter Scope, despite having a longer barrel and thus a larger forward spawn offset. forgot about the Grisco Charger. There's a few unique things about it, mainly that it's the only charger that doesn't take 8 frames to reach minimum charge, instead taking 4 frames. Additionally, it reaches full charge at 4 frames too, which means that partial charges don't exist on this weapon, even if you run out of ink. Other than that, it has the same problem as Pencil where its max range is set to be equal to the E-Leader's max range, despite it having a larger forward spawn offset, but it does have a much slower projectile spawn speed than Leader. It also has the same player hitbox size as Bamboozler and Pencil, for good measure. And finally, here are some graphs similar to the one I showed you earlier, except now with all the chargers included. The first one compares the range of different chargers, with both the forward spawn offset and projectile collision size factored in. The second one shows how much damage each charger does with respect to the frames it's charged for in multiplayer battles. And for all the Samurun heads out there, here's the same damage charge but for Salmon Run instead. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you found it informative, and if you enjoyed it, maybe leave a like and subscribe. I can't give you an estimate for when the next part will come out just yet, but hopefully it'll be within a few weeks. Also, if you want to see the other videos in the series, make sure to check out the convenient playlist I've created with all of them in one place. Have a good one!